Hey, what's going on, folks? It's Larry Packmaster Dog Training here. Okay, we need to talk a little more about this 80-20 rule that I talked about in the, the podcast the other day because I have been bombarded with emails and uh, people wanting more detail and more questions. So I don't know how much detail I can give, but I'm going to try, okay? And if you haven't heard the, the interview, go on to a Vermont Dog Trainer podcast, and uh, Ian Grant does a really, really good job. So please, for me, go on to his uh, podcast, go to iTunes, and share and download the podcast, and, and let me know what you think. He's done a bunch of interviews on there you guys can listen to, and there's a lot of other good information. Does a really great job, okay? So, the 80-20 rule. I talked about how the way I live with my dogs is maybe 20% obedience at, at most and 80% of just creating the behavior I want in the way we live with our dogs, right? So, I have more emails about that one statement than I know what to do with. But the ones I were able to look at, basically, everyone... All the ones that I touched on, everyone has the same idea. And what a lot of people are saying is it has to go back to food and the place command. For example, people say, well, yeah, I kind of do that. You know, I make them do this before I feed them. I make them do this before they eat. They have to wait before they eat. They, you know, they work for their food throughout the day, that kind of stuff. And then a lot of other people said, well, yeah, I kind of do that too. You know, when they're in the house, they have to stay on a place command for hours at a time. And okay, I do neither. I do absolutely neither. I don't do any of that, okay? When the dogs are in the house, they don't have to stay on a place command, okay? Not saying that they ever go to their bed if I need them to. And surprisingly to a lot of people, I don't do anything with their food. I just feed them. I put their food down and I let them eat. I do absolutely nothing, okay? So let me give you a little more I'll see if I could touch on what I do from the start when I bring home a puppy. I've talked about this many, many times, but I guess with, you know, I have enough videos out there now to where things get lost in the shuffle. And sorry about the uh, the NWA look here, but it's freaking cold out today and I have no hair, so got to stay warm. All right, guys, a couple of things that I do with all my dogs to create the behavior I want. Again, you guys have probably all heard this, but I'll try to put it all together and make it as quick as possible. Just some of the important stuff in a nutshell, all right? So I bring a new puppy home, okay? General rule of thumb when it comes to crating a puppy. Very, very important. I talked about this. First trainer I ever worked with 20-something years ago did this, and I followed and have been doing so ever since. My puppies, my dogs sleep in a crate at night no matter how well trained and housebroken they are until they are one year old okay one year old they are not not left loose in the house when no one is home until they are two years old sometimes you can get lucky and you can leave a dog loose in the house before they age but i don't i always go till two years old that's normally about the age where dogs are mature enough and you bypass all the bad habits by crating them properly during that stage, okay? So that's the first thing that I don't stray on, always. Crate them at night till they're one year old, they're not left loose in the house and they're two years old. Now, with a puppy, my dogs know most of their obedience. This is where I do most of the obedience, okay, when they're young. So they know almost all the obedience commands that they're ever going to know by time they're four or five months old, okay? So this is the time I put the work in. I put a lot of work in for the first two years with my dogs. That's what I do. I'm a psychopath. I'm a little OCD about it, but I put all the heavy work in for the first two years because at two years old, I have a very self-sufficient dog that I don't have to mess around with. They can be trusted in any situation, left home all day long for extended hours without being crated. They're very well-behaved dogs at that time, but I put the work in. Okay, so the obedience, they know almost everything they're going to have to know by the time they're four or five months old. I do practice that a lot. I teach everything with luring and marking and motivation, all right? That's the obedience side, very simple. Inside the home, I use a lot of containment on my puppies. They don't have the opportunity to run around the house and get into trouble and do things they're not supposed to do and have accidents in the house or chew things. I don't allow it, 
okay? I'm very OCD. So either they're going to be crated when they're with me or on a leash or in an area where we're all sitting where the puppy's not going to try to escape. We all have eyes on them, okay? So again, in a nutshell, if a puppy is going to be unsupervised, even for 10 seconds, they're crated or on a leash, period. I don't give them an opportunity to make mistakes. So they never really create bad habits. All right, you understand what I'm saying? My dogs do not go on the furniture. They do not go on the bed, period. That's just what I do. You guys do whatever you want. There's a lot of trainers out there, a lot of very good trainers that I like and respect very much that don't put anything behind that. They don't care where their dog's going. I understand it. I just don't like it. I don't want it. I always want, for one, I don't want dog hair on everything in my house. And I like things to be very clear for my dogs. They're part of their family. They're part of our team. But there are certain things that I need you to respect. And listen, they never go on the furniture. So no dog sneaks up on the furniture when we're not home. It's not even something they think about, all right? Um, all right, what else? Where was I, where was I going with this here? Inside the home. I don't do anything as far as training goes, okay? They don't go to a place command and sit there for extended hours. They have free reign of the house once they can be trusted and we're home, except for my kids' rooms. Those are the two rooms in the house. We have a pretty large house, two floors. Um, they never go upstairs unless we're up there, but they're not allowed in the kids' rooms, and that's been with all our dogs and all the homes we've owned that are carpeted. I just don't want the carpet getting dirty. I don't want dog hair on the carpet. I don't teach it. When they're young and they go to go in there, I just tell them, get out of there. That's it. Literally. A few times and they get it. You don't have to shut the doors. You don't have to put baby gates because we have that communication between the two of us where they really understand what you want, guys. And again, that comes from inside the home. Uh, let's give you more examples. Doorways, okay? With my dogs today... I don't make them wait at doorways. They go out the door in front of me. They run like crazy, get excited, but they're trained. During the training process, when they are younger, I am big on working thresholds. Doorways are very, very important to me. Again, a lot of really great trainers out there that I like and respect don't do any of that. They don't believe in it. They think it's, it's useless and not necessary. I disagree very strongly. And I'll tell you, I'll give you two reasons why I disagree. My dogs are more well-behaved than most. And every single shitty dog that I get from a client to train, like a really bad dog, they all allow all these things in the home. The blowing through doorways, the sleeping on the furniture, the sleeping in the bed, all of these things. Now, if I were to start doing that today, is it going to mess my dogs up? No. And so what I tell dog trainers is out there, yeah, you're fine letting your dogs on the furniture, letting them, you know, in the bed, all that stuff, but you're a dog trainer. And so you're doing everything right with your dog. You understand what it takes. The problem is, guys, when the average person allows those things to go on, they're normally allowing a lot of other really bad things to go on. You understand what I'm saying? So they usually have a lot of other really bad habits. So I don't allow any of that. Okay. Again, my dogs have free reign, but they know what they can and can't do. There is no toys. There are no toys left around for the dogs. I tell everyone this. No dog, you shouldn't have toys laying all around your house. Okay. That's something that I want coming from me when it's time to play and train. They have to have meaning. And when you have access to something all the time, you're going to lose a little bit of interest. All right. Plain and simple. The, what I tell my clients might not be the most appropriate thing. My wife might want to poke my eyes out, but my wife is a very beautiful woman. There's no doubt about that. But if she was standing in the doorway naked every single time I came home, after a few years, after many years, it might not be as exciting anymore. Okay? Plain and simple. <laughs> you, you, gotta, you gotta have a little anticipation there and, you know, make it a little, little something to look forward to. You understand what I'm saying? All right. Um, if I'm laying on the couch, this is something I hear from people all the time. If I'm laying on the couch and one of my dogs comes over and throws their head on my chest and wants to be petted, I send them away. 
I tell them, go, go lay down. I won't do that. I won't allow that pushy behavior. In my head, that's my dog saying, hey, bitch, pet me. I don't allow that. Okay, and I love on my dogs a lot, but it's going to be on my terms. So I'll send them away. And then when they go lay down, I'll say, hey, Luca, come here. I'll call him over and then I'll love on him. You understand what I'm saying? Um, Bruno used to do it all the time. He was a great dog. And he'd come over and drop his big heavy head on me and I'd send him away. And he'd go, Phew. and when he'd go lay down, I'd say, come here, buddy. And then I'd love on him. What a lot of people do, they understand that halfway. All right. So what they'll do is they'll be sitting on the couch and the dog will come over and ask to be petted. And they say, no, they'll say, sit. And the dog sits and then they pet him. They say, I made him sit first. Yeah, but guess what? The dog still put himself there and got exactly what he wanted. So again, this is just me. These are the little things that are very, very important to me. I don't allow that. I don't like pushy behavior. If my dogs are starting to get amped up, there is no play in the house, guys. I don't want my kids running around acting wild. I don't want my dogs running around acting wild. So you guys who ask me, you know, how do you live with Luca? He's such a psycho. Not in the house. He comes in and he just is a normal dog. All right. Now, if he's a little antsy and he's all over the place walking around and can't settle down, I'll tell him, Luca, go lay down. Period. Just go lay down. Okay, because sometimes you have to tell him, go lay down, or else he'll just walk circles and visit this and visit that and doesn't want to settle down. All right, so it's not a specific thing that I do inside the home. It's just, as it comes to me in there, I deal with it. Um, when I wake up in the morning, this is my routine. My dogs sleep in my room around my bed. They're on the floor around my bed. They sleep wherever they want but they choose to sleep next to me. When I wake up, I don't say anything. You know, I get on the edge of the bed. Luca may come over and I'll say, good morning, buddy. You know, and then I get up and we go right outside. We go outside, they go to the bathroom. I bring them in. I do a few things and then I feed them. I don't require them to do anything for their food. I don't mess with their food. I put their food in a bowl and I give it to them and they eat next to each other. That's it. I think sometimes, guys, I see so many dogs with, with food issues and possession issues and food aggression, and what people do, they start from day one and they start doing all this crazy shit they see on TV, you know, messing with the dog's food, bumping them out of the way, putting their hand in the food, and, and listen, in my opinion, people create a lot of this food aggression that we see. Just I just let the food, you know, I just let the dogs eat. Now, I know a lot of awesome trainers that I like very much and respect. They're great trainers. They make their dog work for everything. Nothing wrong with that. That's good, too. It's whatever suits your lifestyle. Because remember, the dogs have to accommodate you. You don't accommodate the dogs. You understand what I'm saying? So, again, I put in all the work. Most of the obedience is done by the age of four or five months old. And so once my dogs are adults, I don't have to do much. I do very little with them after two years old. So, you know, I may take a chuck it out to throw a ball for Luca for 10 minutes at a time, 15 minutes at a time, you know, here and there. And when I'm playing ball with him, that's when I'll practice the things he knows, the down, the sit, the heel, the switch, the between the legs, the stand, the watch, um, the guard, you know, the spin, the, the sit pretty. He knows a lot of different things. And when I'm playing ball with him, I'll have him do a bunch of that stuff before I throw the ball. That becomes his reward, all right? Um, so again, 80-20 is how I live with my dogs, but to be honest with you, after two years old, it's more like 96-4, you know? Then it's all living with the dog. I just don't do a lot of obedience, you know? And I think a lot of other dog trainers out there that are real busy don't do a lot of obedience with their own dogs, you know, unless you get people on the working dog side that compete and everything. Look, there's dog trainers out there that have dogs that didn't train their own dogs. They buy trained dogs. You know, that I don't understand. I've never had someone train my own dog, but you got to do what suits you. Doesn't mean it's wrong. Doesn't mean it's right. You got to do what suits you. All right. So, out of all, I've had hundreds of emails about that. You know, people were very interested in it and wanted to know more. Again, I do nothing with the food and my dogs aren't contained to a place command because that's what everyone right away started thinking when I talked about living with your dogs and creating the behavior you want inside the home. That's what they all 
thought, and I do neither, okay? I don't know if this answered any of your questions. In a nutshell, I put an insane amount of work in the first two years of the dog's life, especially the first one year. I do all the work as a puppy. They know everything by four or five months old, and then I just continue to practice and force it throughout the dog's life. I don't allow the craziness inside the home, okay? Um, I don't know if this helped. If it didn't clear things up, I'm trying to think if there's anything else more I do in the home, but there's there's really not, guys. If they do something in the home, I tell them to cut the shit. I don't like it, okay? If they're doing things inside the home I do like, I don't praise them and reward them. They're supposed to, you know? They're supposed to, plain and simple, all right? Um, again, please go on to Ian Grant's podcast, Vermont Dog Trainer, you know, share it, like it, subscribe to it, do all that good stuff. And you guys are more than welcome to keep the questions coming. Oh, on a side note, real quick, all you folks that keep sending me emails asking me questions about problems you're having, some of these emails are real long, guys, and I'll be able to help you a lot more if you send a really good short video. It's hard to tell, you know, it's really hard to help people for real when you're just send in an email but if you show me a video those are the people that get the most help because most of the times we can see something right away that you can change that will make your situation better all right folks peace